live from London, England, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS Summit London 2019. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. We're at the AWS Summit here in London at the Excel Center. There are thousands and thousands of delegates here looking to see the future for their own technologies and what cloud will hold for them. And as well as lots of the other established players here, there are plenty of startups. I'm Susanna Street and this is my co-host Dave Vellante and we're going to be talking to a few of the startup founders who are with us here on theCUBE. It's great to have you here. So first up, Hoob Hygen, who is uh, the co-founder of the 3D mapping based service and uh, this is called Scape Technologies, but also Chandini Jane and you are the co-founder founder as well, or, or founder I believe, is it founder, co-founder, co-founder co um, of your organization called Orqua. Now, let me first of all start talking to you, Jandina, about what you do, because you're offering a service to financial services, aren't you? And helping them with machine learning to, to try and offer the best to portfolio managers for wealth investment. How does it work, what you're offering? Uh, yeah, so our platform basically allows uh, traders, portfolio managers, asset managers who want to make smarter investment decisions to build machine learning models to do this. Uh, the idea is that uh, data-driven investing should help funds make more profits for themselves and their clients, but there's not enough data scientists, skilled data scientists who can actually build models for them. And we address this lack of talent by using a community of data scientists, people who come from outside of finance, uh, to help them crowd, uh, to help fund managers crowdsource models using their intelligence, their talent. Uh, the, so the process is really simple. Clients come to us with what we like to call an investment problem or a finance problem. We take that problem and convert it into a pure math and machine learning problem that someone who is not from finance can understand and solve. It's really interesting you say that because I've spoken to other founders of other data um, companies who say for example, uh, have been looking at the stars uh, for their main bread and butter but then can transfer those skills in astronomy to the, the financial sector. Mm -hmm. Are those the types of people that you're trying to harness their skills? Uh, yeah, exactly. So our community is made up of people who work at tech companies, at Google, at Amazon, HubSpot, of people who are pursuing graduate programs in computer science and math, machine learning, but don't necessarily know finance. And the idea is, can we make these problems into problems, can we make finance problems into problems that this community of data scientists, of really smart data scientists, understand without needing to know finance. It's interesting that it launched because of a lack of, of data scientists, really. But do you think, if you eliminate all the kind of heavy lifting out of what you do, in the future there will be a need for fewer data scientists. <laughs> uh, I don't know if there will be a need for fewer data scientists, but there wouldn't be a need for a firm to have in-house teams. They will basically be able to, uh, a data scientist working in, a, in an e-commerce company should be able to solve problems of a finance company. A data scientist working in Uber should be able to solve problems for a hedge fund because we're, ab we're building this translator that can allow knowledge from anywhere to be used to solve any kinds of problems. Okay, let me talk to you, who because you uh, do 3D mapping services. Correct. Why do you think these are essential for technologies, large and small, going forward? Um, so any, every future industry uh, in the future is going to have uh, some autonomous aspect to it. So if we think about autonomous vehicles, if we think about delivery drones, these are going to be machines that are going to be uh, acting autonomously in human-like environments. And they're going to make decisions based on purely what they're observing without the human in between. So the only way that this can happen intelligently and safely is if those machines also have a human-like understanding of a human-like environment, just like us humans do. Uh, so what we are providing these, um, uh, these machines with is that human-like understanding and the first service that we're building towards that is a uh, visual positioning system to provide the machines with the ability to answer the question, where am I? Now the only way that you can provide a visual positioning system uh, is if you, if you also have a visual map of, uh, of the world. And this map needs to be updated in real time. So for every future industry, having a real-time, up-to-date version of the real world is fundamental. That's the, the, the pinnacle around every single, um, every single decision that an uh, autonomous agent is going to make is going to be based upon this map. So this map is really the value piece, the core piece um, that we're building. So uh, I, I've, I've often wondered, people talk about autonomous cars, but we don't have like, things like autonomous carts. Right now, people will say, well, an Amazon warehouse would have that, but they're following beacons or stripes. Yeah. Uh, I, what you're talking about is potentially taking us to that point where you can 
break that barrier, is that fair? Exactly, and for warehouses, I would forever advise to, to use those beacons, <laughs> because warehouses are, are, are pre, um, pre-massaged environments. You define what the environment looks like, whereas as humans, we walk around in cities, in nature, and all these places that are not pre-processed. We have to take our cues uh, from the visuals that we observe. So if you go uh, back to your hometown, for example, and you observe a Starbucks logo, Starbucks logo, and you <laughs> observe a street sign, uh, you might be able to infer your position based on those visual, visual cues, even though the, the, the environment itself was not pre-processed um, to provide those cues. The cues are already in the nature. So but we've heard, though, that there have been, you know, in these trials, there have been accidents. There's a limit, though, isn't there? Oh, yeah, yeah totally. So, so at the moment, there sure are accidents, um, but uh, you are a human and you can navigate properly within a human environment using your visual sensor, your eyes. Therefore, any machine will in the future only need that visual sensor as well. So only a camera to navigate around uh, the world. And we're seeing great, great progress on, the in, on, on uh, neural networks, deep learning, as well as on the geometry and uh, visual image processing, like the type of uh, computer vision that we do, that are making so much progress that guaranteed a couple of years from now, devices will have that understanding of the world like humans do and will be able to make decisions even better than humans do because they, they don't get tired, they don't need coffee, <laughs> um, so, and they'll be guaranteed more safe than any human nowadays. And Sh Shandini, you probably hate the term robo-investing, right? But, <laughs> but it sounds like you're doing that form of machine investing w for and with hedge funds. Is that, is mm -hmm. that fair? And is your background finance, data science, or both? Both, actually. <laughs> I studied engineering, but I started working as a trader uh, in a derivatives trading company in Chicago. Uh, and when I started with them, we were very old school discretionary, you know, a couple of very senior guys who were making everything based on their past experience and their intuition about the market. Uh, and in my time with them, we started shifting from this manual human process driven trading to something that was more systematic and consistent. Um, I, yeah, and that's where the whole idea for Aquan came from. I saw firsthand the benefits that making your trading more data-driven, more model and algorithms-driven could have. You're unique, you, you probably hate this term too, you're a unicorn. But um, <laughs> I'm guessing you guys have no IT shop, is that right? Uh, your IT is in the cloud, is that right? Or Correct. Uh, okay. It is so you launched time. straight onto the cloud, did you, in, in that startup? I mean, you, you didn't exist before. Launch. Yeah, yeah. We, s we launched straight in the cloud, yeah. Right, and you got a team of developers, they program infrastructure, Totally. Uh, yeah, we have a team really of uh, four developers and the CTO, so total uh, tech team of five. Uh, they're based out of India. Uh, we have a DevOps guy who basically uh, runs everything for us. Our website, our platform, where the data scientists uh, participate in our competition, where our clients see the models, uh, where our clients transfer data to us, and where our machine learning computations run. Right, 3D okay. mapping, you used to buy a box, a big Unix <laughs> box, maybe get a database, and yeah. well, some I mean other software. And <laughs> yeah, so we're, we're, a scale. we're a startup <laughs> as well, right? So yeah. when we, what you need is to process, if you want to create a 3D map of even a city, what we have to do is run 800 GPUs in parallel, blasting through imagery data. Now this is impossible. If we, as a startup, had to buy a GPU rack uh, yeah. right from the bat, we would have been bankrupt even before we started. Yeah, yeah. So like being able to, to spin up GPU servers uh, in the cloud and also killing them uh, after we're done with them saves us a lot of money, but also provides um, uh, so much flexibility for us to, to do prototyping and to, um, and, and to make everything affordable and easy to implement with a very, very small team of very talented system so engineers. So it's a real kind of pick and mix approach. You just think, what kind of services do I need? Get them off the shelf and yeah. then adapt them to, to your needs. I think one of the great things that AWS has been able to do, like infrastructure used to be a very dusty and tangled industry. Mm -hmm. And one of the beauties that AWS was able to do is actually productize, uh, productize infrastructure. So uh, you can now actually pick and choose different products from the AWS, uh, AWS library and put them together, connect them, tie them up very, very cleanly with a very small team and create something that, is, that just uh, exceeds any expectation from a startup uh, 20 years ago. So why, why AWS? A lot of other clouds out there. Google's got a good cloud. Microsoft has a big cloud. Why, why did you guys migrate or, or, or move to AWS? Not move to start with AWS. How was that decision made? Uh, I mean, we started with AWS because uh, we, we were on a startup program with AWS, but then we just really liked uh, the support that we got. Uh, it, uh, we, were, we had access to someone 24-7. We had a dedicated person who was helping us 
and, and we were just starting out. So this was our first time interacting with like cloud infrastructure. Uh, the, the support was great and then the pricing worked out great for a startup. What you just said, it's just as a startup, you are cost sensitive and the ability to turn on, on and off services as and when we need them, I think that was fantastic. Does it concern you? So we've heard a lot about how the cost of services has, has come down quite a lot. There's a lot of cost cutting going on. But in the future, if you're overly reliant on one provider, can't that put you into a corner? Uh, I mean, yeah, you get into <laughs> troubles if you're at Spotify scale, but uh, as a startup, the, the environment that AWS created for uh, startups to flourish is incredible. The yeah. amount of, uh, I think uh, you have the same, like you receive a, a huge amount of credits uh, just for starting. So uh, if you raise a, a seed round of money, which is let's say uh, 1 million US dollars, AWS puts 100,000 worth of credits on top of that. That's 10% extra funding yeah. for free provided by AWS. Uh, furthermore, they have this uh, great architects uh, that help you out with all the questions that you might have if this is the first time um, that you are actually uh, designing a whole architecture around a data processing pipeline or an API or a web platform. Um, they're very, very supportive. What was the, what's the one thing AWS would, could do to make your life easier? If you're sitting here with Andy Jassy, what would you tell him? Um. I mean, it's already fantastic. It's made our lives so much easier. Uh, I really don't think of anything that could have gone better with AWS. Really? Yeah, it's great Nothing? Choice. I mean, yeah, reduce the cost even more. No, <laughs> we can <laughs> say reduce the price. I mean, that's <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much for talking to us about your experiences here on theCUBE. Hoob Hainan, thank you. Co-founder of Scape and also Jandini Jane. It's really been fascinating to hear how you've grown your businesses. So I really appreciate you joining us here with me no and problem. Dave Vellante here at AWS Summit in London.